We're joined now by David Walachinsky. He's the president of the International Society of Olympic Historians. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, David, with uh, you heard there, the polluted water, political and security issues, Zika, how would you classify the Rio Games? Could they be the most troubled in history? Well, I think it still could still come off very well. Remember, you have two great things going for the Olympics. One is the 10,000 plus athletes who are bringing their energy to the competition. I think once the competition begins, you're going to pay less attention to Zika and other problems, and you're going to pay attention to the athletes. The second thing is the Brazilian people are really friendly to foreigners and to visitors, which is great. Having said that, I feel that that problem that was discussed before, the Guanabara Bay and the water problem, that's a real scandal, and that should have been taken care of. Another topic that has been discussed over recent weeks, several Russian athletes being banned from the games because of doping. We haven't really seen the full, full, full fallout from this yet. So how will the dynamics change without them? Well, we, we still have to know what's going to go on with the doping scandal. Remember when the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, made its decision about 10, 11 days ago, 10 days ago, they announced that there was a four-stage process. The first stage was that the international sport federations would eliminate those people who already had doping problems. Then the list of approved athletes would go to an arbitrator uh, chosen by the court for arbitration of sport. That person would then approve a certain list. That list would go on to this three-panel International Olympic Committee uh, panel, and then they would decide finally who gets to compete and who doesn't. And those who are allowed to compete of the Russian athletes will have to agree to continuous doping testing. So I think in the next 48 hours, we're going to learn a lot. You are there in Rio. You've been around. Is the city ready to host the games? Well, I haven't really been in Rio this time around. I've been at the Olympics. And so I haven't seen so much of the city. Um, I was here two years ago for the soccer World Cup, the football World Cup. And it was great. Nothing bad happened despite all the warnings. There was going to be crime. It was going to be terrible. And everything was fine. So it remains to be seen uh, just what will work and what won't work. Uh, my only concern is the infrastructure. Were the venues and the transportation systems completed too quickly? And was there proper safety inspections? I don't know yet. I'm hoping for the best. Well, David, you said it's all about the athletes, the Olympic Games, as we know, full of stories of sacrifice and hard work. What stories do you think will dominate the headlines, and what are you looking forward to watching the most? Okay. The stories that dominate depend on what country you're from. Every country has its own stories. For me, as an Olympic historian, the big story is that in the entire history of the Olympics, we've only had three athletes in any sport win the same individual event four times. Carl Lewis, the American sprinter, Al Oder, American discus thrower, and Paul Elstrom, a Danish sailor. This time we have three different athletes who could join that very rarefied group. One of them is Michael Phelps, the swimmer in two events, and two Japanese women wrestlers who've won the last three Olympics and are going for a four-peat, as we call it. So for me, from that point of view, uh, historian's point of view, that's a big story.